what we're going to be going over here is calculating the weighted average number of shares of common stock that's outstanding and we're going to be restating these shares outstanding uh, prior to any stock dividends and stock splits here to determine these weighted averages here. So for example here we're going to have Corporation A we're going to be looking at its common stock activities and calculate the weighted average shares based on these activities here. So let's go down and look at our example here. So what we're going to be doing here we'll set up this table here and our ultimate goal is to determine the weighted number of shares that are outstanding here on our stock activities here. So what we have to do is we have to we're going to have these share transactions here and we're going to have to determine the number of shares that are outstanding based on our share transactions here and our share transactions are going to be at specific dates here and based on these specific dates and these transactions here uh, we'll be able to determine the fraction a year that they're outstanding and then we're going to the key is here we're going to have to restate our um, uh, stock here based on the fact that we're going to have uh, stock dividends and stock splits here and, and this is a key to this whole thing here so first let's go through the example just our basic example here and determine the shares outstanding based on our share transaction so uh, on our dates here we just got them for this year 20x1 here so beginning balance here uh, January 1st here we have uh, 240,000 shares here so we have 240,000 shares outstanding here then comes along February 1st and there's stock issued here 60,000 shares here and this is all common stock here are issued so we have the shares outstanding here at 240,000 we issue 60,000 so now we have 300,000 shares outstanding now comes along here March 1st or 3-1 we have a 20% stock dividend so uh, that calculation is just taking the uh, shares that we had outstanding here uh, prior to the dividend here of 300,000 shares here times 20%. That gives us 60,000 shares here. We'd have an increase here in 60,000 shares due to this dividend here. So 300,000 plus the 60,000 is going to give us 360,000 shares outstanding. Now we come along here May 1st here and we acquire treasury stock. We're going to buy back 50,000 shares here. So we have the shares outstanding here, 360,000. We would be subtracting or buying these shares back here, 50,000 thousand shares so we're going to have shares outstanding here of three hundred and ten thousand okay so we've got that calculated up here May 1st now comes along June 1st here 6 1 we're gonna have a three for one stock split so what we have here this uh, shares outstanding prior to the split here three hundred and ten thousand so what we would do a three for one we're gonna uh, increase our shares here by three times. So three times 310,000, we now come up with our shares outstanding here of 930,000. Okay, fine. Now the point is we're gonna, we've got that calculated here as our stock split. Now on our last uh, transaction here on 10-1, October 1st, we're gonna reissue treasury stock that we're holding and we're gonna reissue 30,000 shares here. So we have, uh, prior to that reissuing, we have 930,000 shares outstanding plus the 30,000 here reissued treasury stock. We end up with 960,000 shares outstanding. Okay, so that's fine here for calculating our shares outstanding for each of those uh, uh, each of those transaction dates that we have listed here. Now, this is the key here. Now, what we have to do based on the fact that we have stock dividends here and also a stock split here, this is what has to be done. So when you have a stock dividend or stock splits, they occur, you need to restate the shares outstanding before the stock dividend or stock split here. And we have to do that in order to calculate the weighted shares. So, so what we start here, let's first look at this stock dividend. We had that here on 3-1 here, and we had that for 60,000 shares here. But what we have to do is we have to restate this um, whatever is prior to this dividend here that would be our beginning balance here plus the stocks issued here so what we would do since that was 20% we would restate it by 
in, uh, multiplying 1.2 times those shares that are outstanding here prior to the stock dividend. So 1.2. So that's the first thing we have to do um, uh, for restating based on the stock dividend. Now, the other thing we have to do here, we also have this stock split here on 6-1. So everything, a three for one split here. So everything prior to the 6-1 uh, date here, that would be uh, your beginning balance up through 5-1. That has to be what they call restated again. And uh, three, uh, three times or a stock split here, three for one. What we have to do is we have to restate all these shares here prior to this uh, stock split here by uh, increasing them three times here. So you can see that here for the beginning balance, three times here for the stock split of three to one. And then stock issued, that's also three times here. Um, for uh, stock issued in and then we also have that stock dividend that has to be increased here by three times and then our acquired well based on what we have here with the outstanding shares here after the acquire, acquiring those treasury shares here that also we look at three times here so there's our stock split okay fine so now did, uh, we got to look at the fraction of the year here so we when we're talking about restating for these first uh, first uh, January 1st here through February 1st we also you restating here that was 1.2 for that 20% stock dividend and also three here for the stock split and then when we got down to the fact here that we after our uh, the stock dividend was our stock dividend here was taken care of then we just had to take care of the next shares outstanding here for three one through five one just for the stock split so you can see what's going on here okay so the next thing we have to do so we'd be multiplying these these restated amounts here times the shares outstanding that would be like for the first case two hundred forty thousand here and then we take one point two times that and also three times that 240,000 and then we're going to have to determine the fraction of the year that those shares are outstanding here and that's going to give us our multiplying that times those amounts here plus the shares outstanding is going to give us our weighted shares here. Okay so let's look at this fraction of the year here. So we've got our restated amounts here based on our stock dividends here and our stock splits. Now just for the fraction of years that's pretty uh, uh, simple to understand here. So we look at our dates that we had. We started out with 1-1 one, one here and then on 2-1 we had the stock issued. So that's only one month here between January 1st here and February 1st. So this amount here is for a fraction of here of 1 12th of the year. Then we got the same thing coming up here with stock issued on 2 1 and then our stock dividend here in 3 1. So that's also just one month here setting. So that's 1 12th of a year here. Then we get up here and we're looking at our dates here 3 1 here, March 1st through. A May 1st. So there's two months here for this this uh, stock dividend here. That's sitting there at two months. This share is outstanding of 360,000 here. So that's two twelfth of the years. And then again, we got the 5 1 through 6 1 here. That's only from May through 1st to June 1st. That's only 1 twelfth of the year. Then we get uh, the last amounts here. So we got this 6 1 up to the 10 1 or October 1st day here. So that's four months here. So the stock is. A share is outstanding here after the stock split that would be for four months and then 10-1 here that would be through the end of the year here 12-31 so that would be three months here so that represents here those shares outstanding for three twelfths of a year okay so you got to figure out your fractional amount per year here based on the activity that you're having and the looking at the different the dis um, the time difference here the uh, amount of time or the amount of uh, months in this case between each of these activities then we've we've taken care of our shares that are outstanding here based on those shares uh, the share changes here uh, would change our shares outstanding based on those activities then we have our restated amounts here and now we can determine the weighted shares here. So weighted shares, just as we talked about again, whatever you have to restate that frac uh, that amount here, in this case, it was a decimal amount here based on a 20% stock dividend and that three for one stock split here. So whatever factor that is, you take that times your shares outstanding in this case, we have two different factors amounts here times the fractional amount here per year. That's going to give you your weighted shares here. Again, we can look at it and just so you understand it here. That would be A, the shares outstanding 
times the B here, the restated fact, uh, factors that you have to calculate it, and then C here, the fraction of the year that applies to each of these shares outstanding. So take that A times B times C here, and there you're going to get your weighted shares here. Okay, so you just, to determine your total weighted average number of shares outstanding, just sum your weighted shares here for each of those activities and those time periods here. And if you add all those up here, you're going to get weighted shares here of 969,000. 500 shares here. So that's the weighted average number of shares outstanding here. And you can see a difference from the fact here that, well, we had up through 10-1, we had 960,000. So that's that's how, simple um, example here. Uh, just going through the um, mechanics here to determine these weighted average number of shares outstanding. And that you would use here for your earnings per share and other calculations based on, again, the weighted average number of shares outstanding. Okay, so that takes care of our example here. And just remember here, we what was included in these share transactions were some stock issued here. And then we learned how to handle the 20%. Uh, we had a stock dividend. You have to account for that. And then we bought back some stocks here as treasury stocks. So we issued some. We bought some back. We had a stock split here uh, that we had to account for. And then we also re issued some of the treasury stock here. So all of these share changes affected our balance here. So we determine our uh, shares outstanding based on the share transaction. And then remember, we have to restate anything prior to what's uh, any of those stock splits and stock dividends. So when we had this 20% stock dividend here, anything before that, that we stock dividends on 3-1, and it, we'd have to take any of the um, activities or our shares outstanding, the balance prior to that has to be restated by the fact, uh, in this case, the 20% factor here, 1.2 here, increase those shares outstanding. And then when you look at, we've gone down to our stock split here, again, anything before that has to be restated. So we had those, uh, our shares outstanding here from one, what our beginning balance, 1-1 one, one through 5-1. That was affected here by that stock split. Those had to be factored. That had to be restated or factored in here. So you get the idea here of how how you have to account for these things when you're talking about restating here. And then again, just remember the fraction of years here for each one of these the shares that are outstanding based on those transactions. The timing difference between those transactions. So that gives you your fractional years um, uh, per year here for each of the shares outstanding for those periods and then you can all multiplying everything out here. Shares outstanding times the restated factors here times the fraction of the year they're outstanding gives you the weighted shares here. Summing those up again there you get your weighted average number of shares outstanding. Okay so that takes care of our basic example here. Now remember this only included common stock here so this was very basic example here but it only included common stock. All right so that ends our subject.